blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding professional record, 10 wins, one loss, 25 feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 154 and one half pound. Fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presenting the challenger, Anthony Showtime Pettis! And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record, 12 wins, one loss. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Glendale, Arizona, he is a reigning, defending WEC lightweight champion, Ben Smooth Henderson! All right, gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We're gonna keep it clean. Touch gloves, make it official. Amp up with amp energy. The official drink of the WEC. For the final time, we are set to go for the main event of the WEC. Anthony Pettis and the champion, Smooth Ben Henderson. Finally, it is on. Anthony Pettis does not want to touch gloves. No love lost between these two. And like you said, uh, Henderson goes in with no chip on his shoulder, so relaxed, and Pettis kind of does. He's got something to prove. He's going to show the world. You know, you could go down your checklist of fighter attributes and who you'd give the edge to, and I think at the end of that scorecard, you'd be almost dead even. Yeah, you would. I mean, uh, the one guy's strengths, they kind of even out. Balance the other guy's weaknesses. Very, very evenly matched fight when you break everything down and put everything together. And really, the big question, I love this. Ha, Henderson taking a little page out of Pettis' book right there. Showing him, hey, I got a black belt in Taekwondo as well. It's very interesting to see who's going to have the advantage in wrestling. We all thought Shane Roller did in the last fight, and he didn't. And on paper, you think Henderson should, but we'll see. <laughs> Pettis answers back with a front jump roundhouse of his own. Just so quick and unorthodox, and Ben Henderson, though, so extremely durable. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, we've seen him in full-on triangles and arm bars and chokes and and you know, how is his arm broken? How is he not sleeping? And he just, uh, it's unbelievable how he could avoid submissions and just keep fighting through things. And when he gets that guillotine on you, like people tap so fast. It's just extremely powerful chokes he has. The guy's kind of finding the range. Just being patient, trying to set up something big. This one's scheduled for five rounds. Remember, the winner tonight retires the WEC belt, and a unification is on, and it's Ben Henderson getting the clinch first after a lethal combination as he comes forward. Yeah, finally got aggressive there, let his hands go, got the double uh, the double unders on. Pettison is not letting go, looking to take this fight to the ground early. A lot of fighters underestimate the strength of Ben Henderson, his easy demeanor, but boy, he is such a strong athlete when he gets into this clinch. Very strong, and, and he, he sustains that strength, you know? It's not something that drops off, and he goes at such a relentless pace, too. You think he's gonna fatigue a little, but he's able to keep this up for 25 minutes straight, as we saw before against Cowboy Simone. Softening up the legs of Anthony Pettis, just holds him there in the clinch, and look at Pettis. <laughs> Fading like he's yawning. This is nothing. I, I think I remember seeing that from uh, Ali back in the day. In, in between rounds, he's doing it during the round. But there it goes. Inside trip takedown. And Pettis is on his back. Yeah, that's such a deceptive takedown. You get the double unders, you try winging the guy around from side to side, he defends it well. And then when he least expected, you just push forward, dig that leg on the inside, trip him back to his back. And Pettis doing a great job there before Henderson can suck his hips away from the cage. He slides his back up against him. Yeah, he's already got his back. He's already in the position to stand back up, staying relaxed. Look at the face of Ben Henderson. Oh, oh. armbar attempt. Henderson sees nothing to it. And don't forget that Pettis has got a great triangle. 
tapped out a lot of top fighters with that triangle. But like I said before, something's crazy with the arteries of Henderson's neck. It's like he can't be choked out. How close to the TV screen do you think Frankie Edgar and Gray Maynard are? Or are they just thinking about their fight on January 1st? Uh, I'm sure they're watching this intently, for sure. They have big attention. Man. There's those kicks from Pettis. He's so dynamic, so powerful. One minute to go here in round number one. This one's scheduled for five for the lightweight belt. This is usually where Anthony Pettis likes to strike, a low in the action. Yeah, he's, he's the type of guy that, like, every strike has a purpose. He's really relaxed, and he sets you up for the big one. He doesn't waste a lot of energy. He doesn't throw tons of strikes, but he's so good at setting you up for the knockout shot. Beautiful front kick there from Pettis. Then fakes like the front kick, goes upstairs with the roundhouse, just a little high, skins the head of Henderson. Oh, good counter hit there. That hurt, seemed to hurt Henderson a little bit. He drops out for the single leg. Looking to finish, good hips there by Pettis. Looks like uh, he's got him up against the cage and will be able to suck him out here, and he does. Another takedown by Ben Henderson. Final 10 seconds here of round number one. We will see a second round in Glendale, Arizona when we return to Jobbing.com Arena after this short break. Is there all the time on old face, so we're okay. You're doing great. Great round. Two chances, two takedowns. Awesome work. Relax, get your breath. WEC lightweight belt on the line from Jobbing.com Arena in Glendale, Arizona. Anthony Pettis, the challenger in the white trunks. The champion, Smooth Ben Henderson in the black trunks. Tough first round to call, Stefan Bonner. I mean, it really is. Uh, you know, the main difference is probably the takedowns by Henderson. But Pettis, I mean, avoided any damage right. and uh, really played a good game, shot a good try, and was able to stand back up after the first one. So very close round. Good, uh, good job by both fighters, really avoiding any really damaging punishment in that round. Although they, they both put out some good offense as well. Oh, big right hand. And Pettis now Pettis. takes the back. Just like that. See, the fight could be over at any second like that. That is sets up his strikes. And Did you see Henderson immediately protect his throat, thinking that Pettis was going to take the back and go for the choke? Looks like uh, he slows the pace down. Henderson, Henderson. is actually got a Kimura here. Good job by Pettis putting him down on his back. And now Pettis turning it around as a Kimura of his own. Jeez, just twisted that arm behind Henderson's back. We've seen that before from Ben what Henderson. The guy is absolutely gumby. Absolutely gummy, like double chewing in every joint in his body, plus his arteries are deep in his neck. It's pretty cement again. Great action here in round number two. Remember, this one is a five round affair for the lightweight belt in the WEC. And then the unification is on following the Frankie Edgar Gray Maynard bout, UFC January 1st. Slows just a little bit. Keep your eye on Anthony Pettis in the white trunks. Looking for something to launch against the champion, Ben Henderson. From this angle, it looked like it was a right hand that dropped Henderson. But I guess I'm not looking at the replay. He actually stepped on his foot and kind of fell in the punch. It didn't really connect. So but that one sure did. Big left just missing from Ben Henderson. Then he goes to the attack. 
and grabs the single. And that's what he does so well, mixing up that strike and grappling, trying to get you at exchange, dropping down for a shot. You sprawl, pop back up, get more punches off, and back in on your legs. Ben Henderson, so smooth in the transitions. You know, and this is more Henderson's fight too here on the inside in the clinch, you know. Henderson, our Pettis has got to use that range. You know, once he's on the outside, then we're going to see some more of that vehement striking. Anthony Pettis looking for range, looking for distance to do something spectacular and come in and try to end the reign of Ben Henderson, the champion in the black trunks. you got to respect the the punching power of Ben Henderson. He's not all about Muay Thai and Taekwondo. No, he has great power in his hands, and uh, a pretty good kicker as well. And now uh, it looks like Pet is stalking, kind of controlling the center of the rage, looking to set up that big strike. Beautiful body kick by Henderson. Would you say that this pace would favor a Ben Henderson? Well, I, they're not really at that reckless pace. I mean, I, that's not Pettis' game. He, he, he makes every strike count. He really tries to set you up for the big one. So, you know, I think, again, the faster, more torrid pace favors Ben Henderson. As we approach the final minute here of round number two, this one's scheduled for five for the lightweight belt of the WEC. In an inadvertent low kick. Ben Henderson says, I'm fine. Herb Dean, our referee, says he can have up to five minutes. Ready. All right. Bye. Ben shakes it off. Both fighters just, Steph, are just so crisp with his striking. And, you, know, you see a fight like this where it slows down. It's, well, they're so equally matched. I mean, it's, no one has a real major advantage. And really good reaction there. I mean, uh, that, the timing's good for both of them. You just saw Henderson throw a high kick and a beautiful counter. Pettis went underneath and kicked the leg that uh, Henderson was standing on. But Henderson's got some thighs on him. Usually that takes the guy's legs out, causes him to fall down, but not with that. This is one of those fights that's been a year in the making. As both of these men climb the mountain, Henderson, the defending champion, and Pettis has had his eyes squarely on this belt as we go under 10 seconds here in round number two. So we will see a third round from Glendale when we return to Versus. in Glendale, Arizona, Jobbing.com Arena. Alongside Stefan Bonner, I'm Todd Harris as we prepare to turn the page on the WEC and roll into the UFC. This for the lightweight bout, your champion in the black trunks is Ben Henderson going up against a very talented challenger, Anthony Pettis in the white trunks. And we got a really close fight on our hands. Yeah, I mean, you can't take my word for it, but my guess is that the judges gave Ben the first round and Pettis the second round. One of these men will retire that UFC belt, and then they will get a shot at the UFC belt to unify them. That coming after the Frankie Edgar and Gray Maynard bout coming up January 1st, UFC from Las Vegas. And once again, Pettis doing the stock, and let's see if Ben comes forward a little more. Even his corner said, you know, that round was really close only because you were backing up a little too much. Oof. 
Ill intentions on that straight right from Ben Henderson. Yeah, he really loaded up on that punch. He got Pettis with the takedown. Henderson continues to work, throwing the elbows into the That's thigh. That's the going to the full mount, getting the back of uh, Henderson. Wow. Henderson giving up the back to Anthony Pettis, a dangerous place to be. Henderson trying to protect that choke, going to stand up. Good job of cradling. See how uh, Pettis locked his hands there? It's an excellent defensive boy getting shaken off the top when he got someone's back. But Ben's so flexible, it just seems like he can sit in this position all day and just slowly start to shake Which him Which fighter, off. though, Stefan, is exerting the most energy in this position? I don't know, but I mean, uh, it takes a lot of strength to hold on like that. It also takes a lot of strength from Ben to, to carry someone on your back, you know, all someone's weight on your back. He's got a 155-pound backpack right now, and Ben Henderson looking for a way out of this. Probably a little more than 155 today. That's the official way in. <laughs> Henderson looking for a way to scrape Pettis off his back. Pettis looks like he could stay there for a long time. He's got the body triangle on. That makes it a little easier to hold that position. This is like getting a 30 second breather in the middle of the round. <laughs> for Pettis? Absolutely, he's just hanging on. Ben Henderson looking for a way as the crowd comes alive. Pettis. Doing a good job, not letting go of that arm of uh, a Pettis. Or, sorry, Henderson doing a good job. All right, at a stalemate here, if you're Ben Henderson's corner, what are you telling him? To keep control of that over arm, you know, the, the, the arm over your shoulder is the one that could cho choke you. As long as he controls that, he's not gonna be able to get choked. He is gonna take some Rocky Balboa-like shots to the ribs right now from Anthony Pettis, and it looks like the champ Ben Henderson just cannot figure out this puzzle. Yeah, Pettis just walloping the body of uh, Ben Henderson right now. And yeah, a bit of a stalemate here. Henderson can't keep up that arm, and he really can't shake him with a body triangle. So he's just got to kind of sit here and wait it out, maybe hopefully get a break from the referee. 90 seconds to go here in round three. This one's scheduled for five for the lightweight belt. But again, Henderson just being very tranquil and patient. You know, if he does something stupid now, if he really tries to force himself out or slam Pettis, it could cost him the fight, and he's not about to do that. He knows he has uh, two more rounds to work after this. Well, you look at the thighs of Ben Henderson. He has got world-class cycling thighs and strength there. But again, you make a great point. He is carrying the full weight of Anthony Pettis right now. Yeah, he is, and Pettis relentless going for that neck. Five seconds left here in the third round. So all Anthony Pettis right in the back of Ben Henderson. Smashing those ribs with his fist, looking for that rear naked choke. And now it's Henderson teeing off on the thigh of Pettis. And he's found a way. Is this the way he's gonna get rid of Anthony Pettis? Oh, he better watch have... out for that neck. The final 20 seconds of round three were scheduled for five. It looks like he's gonna make it out of this round, make it out of danger, and get to start back on his feet in 10 more seconds. And that's it, he breaks it. And we will see another round here in Glendale. It's a classic. Keep touching. He's out hustling us, though. He doesn't want this more than you, does he? Come on now. He took him down, too. That was excellent. Great job. Breathe. Get locked position. Yeah, what? Yep. Yep. Done this a thousand times at the next level already, right? Back 
in Glendale, Arizona, Jobbing.com Arena. This is the lightweight title bout, the main event of the night. Ben Henderson, your champion in the black trunks, Anthony Pettis, the challenger, in the white trunks, and a great shot from both fighters. Yeah, both guys landed right there. And you gotta think, you gotta wonder if that, uh, you know, riding the guy's back like that with a body triangle, you still gotta be squeezing with your thighs to hold yourself there. If that, if that took a toll on Anthony's thighs, if that's gonna affect his speed and footwork, we'll see. This is the fourth round. We are scheduled for five. Henderson with a vicious body kick there, all shin. Now it's Henderson coming forward with combinations. Tries to shoot a single, he's in trouble. What an escape there. And it's Henderson on top. Jeez, Pettis had that guillotine tightened. And just like a top, Henderson spun out. Are you kidding me? How about this action? Henderson relentless with the guard passing, and Pat is fishing for that triangle. Wow. And now it's oh. Henderson taking the back of Pettis. Just oh. moments ago, he was near a choke, and now it is Ben Henderson, the champion, reversing it. Boy, how the tides have turned. The body lock is in, and it's in deep. Pettis shoves it off. The crowd is on its feet, and uh, Pettis is in a little bit of trouble here. Jeez. Oh, and again, it's his seat. It. This time he's in deep. It's under the chin. It's, uh, this is Henderson's move, too. Oh, how did Pettis get out of that one? So quick was Henderson there. Jeez. Ben Henderson happy to inflict some damage to the face of Anthony Pettis because he can continue to sink in that choke. And look at this. Now it's Pettis' turn to be patient. I mean, he wants to skate bad, but it's not worth getting submitted. My guess is it's two rounds to one, so Pettis has a lead. So the most important thing here is protecting that neck. Escaping is secondary. Anderson once again fishing that right arm in there, looking for an opening. Oh, oh. beautiful escape there. And Anthony Pettis reverses on him. Now he tries and to jump passes. the side control. And now he Anderson takes the back. His back. Unbelievable back and forth action here in the fourth round of this title fight. And Henderson calmly picks the hair out of his mouth. Under two minutes to go here in round number four. She won an escape by Pettis, too. I mean, he, 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 that's timing. He, at the exact moment he could escape, he hit that hip turn and got out of trouble. Coming up on 90 seconds to go here in round number four, the champion, Ben Henderson, looking to retain his belt in the WEC and make the jump to the UFC where a belt unification bout awaits. And really, what a back and forth round. I mean, jeez, I, I don't know who to give this round to. Still over a minute left. Anything could happen here on the fourth. And then Pettis back on the attack, doing the stalking, much like he's been doing most of the fight. Under a minute to go here in round number four. And now it's Anthony Pettis coming forward with a flurry. Nice left hook by Pettis, and Henderson jumps down for a double leg. Pettis going for that guillotine. Henderson's out of trouble. He steps to the side, relieves some pressure. And now Anthony Pettis has to find a way to capitalize. of the belief that Ben Henderson can live in this position for an hour if you let him. Yeah, he did the right thing. He escaped at least a half guard. A lot harder to tap the guy that, but if, even if he had full guard, like, I don't think he'd be short that. He has got crazy solution. Pettis now trying to get to the closed guard. Now he's back in the closed guard, but only with 10 seconds left. And we 
will see a fifth and final round from Glendale, Arizona with a belt on the line. for the final round of the WEC. Ben Henderson and Anthony Pettis putting on an absolute show, and I think if you took a straw poll around the cage, a lot of people would say this thing's all even at two rounds apiece. I would agree with you there, Todd. It could very well be two rounds apiece, and this is the fifth and final round deciding the outcome of this fight, deciding who's gonna go on to fight for the UFC belt. Your champion, Ben Henderson, in the black trunks, Anthony Pettis in the white trunks, the challenger. Both men want the date with destiny for a unification bout in the UFC, fighting the winner of Frankie Edgar and Gray Maynard. And really, from a fight fan's point of view, there's no better thing than a title fight being dead even going in the fifth round. Anybody's fight, anyone, both guys' opportunity to turn it up and try to steal that belt. One thing for certain, the real winner tonight will be the fans because we have had not one but two epic fights here. The co-main event going the distance and now the main event and a low shot from Anthony Pettis. Not to mention one of the, one of the best undercards I think I've ever seen. Oof. Yep, that was a low one. You sure? Ben Henderson You're can okay. have up sure. to five okay. minutes at the discretion of our referee Herb Dean. He shakes it off, says, let's go. And he finally gets a glove touch out of Pettis. It's amazing how the respect actually grows when you're pounding out some guy through 25 minutes. I think Anthony Pettis is really going to respect oh, Ben Henderson. Right and then he rocks him. Landed. And then he rocks him with a right. He respects him, but he wants his belt. Yeah, he caught Ben. Uh, he, he read Ben. He knew Ben was going to kick, and he threw a beautiful right straight left to both punches land. And now he gains some confidence. He could see it in the swagger of Pettis as he comes forward, pops him with another stinging jab. Pettis now going to the speed work, going to the flash, going Houston. to the showtime. Oh, and he's gonna let him off the hook. Doesn't want to get taken down. He's getting the back of pa uh, Henderson. He's a little high this time. Gives it up. Smart by Pettis rather than being caught on his back. Under three minutes to go. See that cutesy footwork and uh, shuffle stepping had Ben thinking a little bit. I asked actually caused him to slip and fall down. Oh, <laughs> that beautifully timed knee, and I think I couldn't tell if that landed flush. It looked like Ben might have been hurt there for a second. Henderson's not giving up the single, though. Unbelievable chin on uh, Henderson. You really can't hit a guy harder than a flying knee on the way in for a double leg takedown like that. Just ask Cub Swanson. And Henderson finishes with the takedown. Just over two minutes left, and it's still anybody's fight. Which fighter wants it more as we approach the final two minutes of the WEC in this lightweight bout for the belt? I mean, Pettis seemed to be in complete control this round, then halfway through gets taken down, fishing for that triangle, but he really needs to get back to his feet and not give up his back. Don't want to hand this one to the judges, Stefan Bonner, but it looks like that's what we are destined to do. Oh, and Henderson's got one hook in. Well, Pettis does not want to finish the round defending a rear naked choke, that's for sure, especially when he was pretty much in control. <laughs> and again, rolls and hits that escape. Beautiful job by Pettis getting out of trouble and gets back to where he's most comfortable, at range. Under 90 
seconds to go. Stefan, I cannot think of a better way to bring oh, down the curtain. Oh my God! And Pettis was Did so you flush. see that? He ran off the wall like a ninja and landed a high kick. Unbelievable! I've never seen anything like that. It's like Anthony, something out of a movie. Anthony Pettis goes full matrix on the champion, and now he's got him in trouble. And Ben Henderson's in a world of trouble. That is something out of the matrix. I can't believe he landed that in the last round of a title fight. Unbelievable. Here we go, folks. The final 35 seconds as we bring down the curtain. Are you kidding me? And was that creativity something that is going to bring a belt to the waist of Anthony Pettis? Or has the champion done enough to retain it? And really, like, Henderson's got a heck of a chin. Anyone else probably would have been knocked out by that. It absolutely flattened him. And he was able to recover and get there right back up. And oh man, unbelievable. And both of these warriors have put on a show in Glendale. Welcome to the UFC. Wow, what a fight. to Henderson, got aggressive, got that inside trip. So uh, Pettis spent some time on the ground, but Pettis, uh, some good counter punch in there, probably closed the round a little stronger. And then round two, another razor close round, but it was Pettis' hands and his feet that probably got him to round two. Round three, a little flash razzle-dazzle from Matt Henderson. Big takedown from Pettis, and spent most of this round on the back of Ben Henderson. Kevin Henderson defend the rear naked show, pulverizing the body with punches. And then, my God, this fight just kept getting better and better. Round four, that guillotine went tight. Great escape by Ben Henderson. Smooth one lands on top. Then he has the back of Pettis. Tides have changed, just like in round three. And so close to choking him out there. And Pettis hit a beautiful escape there to get out of danger. And then Pettis opened up with his hands. Really closing that round four strong, and all came down to this fifth and final round. Hard punches, beautiful knee there from Showtime Pettis, and here's why he gets his nickname Showtime. Unbelievable! Just flattened Henderson. How the heck did he recover from that kick? That is incredible. That he may have been incredible kick I've ever the seen. move of the century in all of MMA. Never in my life have I been so happy not to be a judge as we send it inside the cage. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. The judges score this contest 48-47, 48-47, and 49-46, declaring the winner by unanimous decision and new WEC lightweight champion of the world, Anthony Showtime!